Hi, my name is Sean Scott from Advanced Electronics and today we're going to look at setting up the AdNet network. Looking at the two different types of network available. On the left hand side we have the standard network card, the MXP503. And on the right hand side we have the fault tolerant network card, the MXP509. Identifying the network cards is relatively simple. The left hand side standard network card has prominent gaps between the network in and network out terminal blocks. The right hand side fault tolerant network card, the terminal blocks are more or less touching. Other identifying features we can use is the standard network card on the left has all through hole type components and the fault tolerant network card on the right has the majority of surface mount type components. Before fitting a network card to a control panel, always ensure the panel is powered down. If a network card is fitted to a panel that is powered up, this can lead to damage to the control panel. The wiring connections of the network are very, very simple. On a standard type network, we come out of the network out connection from the A, B and screen connection, and we are using red, black and the screen cable. This will go directly into the next node, and the sequence will follow. We will go from A, B and screen out directly to A, B and screen in. This will continue throughout our network. On the last node, we would have a spare out connection. Like on this first node, we have a spare in connection. On our in connection, we have an end of line resistor of 150 ohms fitted across the A and B connection, as we can see. On the last node on the network, and in this case, we are using a repeater. We can see we are going from the network out on the previous panel to the network in. So we have the red for the A, the black for the B, and the screen connection. And on the network out termination, which is spare, we fit our 150 ohm resistor across the network out A and B connection. Without this 150 ohm resistor being fitted, we will experience a network ground fault. On the fault tolerance type network card, instead of an end of line resistor being fitted, the network is actually wired in a loop format. So we come out of network A, B screen into the next control panel, network in A, B screen. And this would continue throughout the network until the last panel would come out of the network A, B screen and return back into network in A, B screen. So the fault tolerant network is wired in a loop format. So following on, on the fault tolerant network, the next node has the network in AB screen and the network out AB screen continuing on to the next node. And this again would continue in a loop format all the way around the network ring until the last leg returned back, making a secure network. So how to add a control panel to a network or how to create the network node numbers. First of all, we must enter the commissioning menu. So we press menu and we select the tools option. We can use the navigation arrow keys or we can use the numerical shortcuts as well. Enter commissioning and we enter our default 7654 engineering password. Once we have accessed the commissioning menu, we go to commissioning menu 2 by selecting next menu and selecting setup. Once we have accessed the setup menu, we can now amend the node numbers. So this control panel we are going to use as node 1. What you will notice is upon the node numbers changing, we will also see the panel zone number change. This is to prevent the duplication of any zones across the network. Zone numbers cannot be duplicated. So each panel must use its own designated zone numbers. If I select number one and press tick, we will notice the next node automatically allocates itself as node two. On a network system, the panel does not have to be wired to node 2. It can be wired to any node, but the node numbering is always the same. 1 always looks for 2, 2 always looks for 3, and so on. The only time this does not occur is if that node number 
does not exist. So if node 2 was taken out of the system, in our example, we could then program node 1 to look for node 3. The same function will then be performed on other control panels on the network. In our case, we have a main control panel and a repeater. So on the repeater panel, we come to the same menu, we go to Tools, Commission, enter our engineering 7654 password to get access to commissioning. Select the setup menu again. And because we only have two panels on our little network, this is going to go in reverse. So node two is the last node on the network. So it's going to look back for node one. That would be the same case if there was 10 panels, 20 panels, 200 panels on the network. The highest node always looks back for the lowest node. So in this case, I will say this network node is two and press tick. It will, of course, allocate the next node number to be node three. But we have to change this because we will get a fault. There is no such thing as node three in this little network. The next node is going to be node one. We can also see that terminal zone, the panel zone itself has changed. Previously on node one, that changed to 1701. And this time on node two, it has changed to 1702. Node three, if it did exist, would be 1703 and so on. That would carry on. Now to view the network is working, we can escape, select the exit option, again enter our password, if we select view, next menu and select the network option, we can see node 2 which is the panel we are at, is local. And node 1, which is the first panel we accessed, is still in level 3. So we need to make sure we bring that panel out of commissioning or signals will not transmit across the network. The network is still communicating, but signals will not transmit. So if I bring the opposite panel out of commissioning, we can see the level will change. There we go. Node 1 has now changed to level 2. If I scroll to the right... I can see the network data packets being transmitted. That's showing me the network is working okay. So this is on a standard network. Looking at the same information, but this time on a fault tolerant type network, it is set up in exactly the same format. If we enter the view network menu, we can see this time we are given FT ring. So this tells us it's a fault tolerant type network. If a fault was to appear on the network, a break in the network cable, for example, then we will be given an FT ring input lost. This is telling us that node one has lost its input. So knowing how the system is set up and wired, this will tell us node one is not receiving a network input. However, communications around the network has not ceased. Because it is fault tolerant, communications will still continue. A single cable fault will not prevent the network from communicating. Once the fault is rectified, the FT ring returns back to normal. And if we scroll to the right, we can see data packets, bad packets, any comms lost and an FT ring fault. I can press the zero button to clear the net statistics back down to zero again. And we can see the network is now up and running. Now, if you are experiencing issues with our network, it's quite a handy tip to use a repeater, if possible, if available on site, to test our network. Because the repeaters are mobile and they run from the 24 volt DC supply of a panel, for example, we can easily remove a repeater chassis, take it to a control panel, and just run a simple cable between the two to prove the network is working. So, in this example, I've simply took a flying cable from the network card, and then connected that down onto a repeater. And on the repeater unit, we have the flying lead coming down, connected into the network in, just to prove that the actual network does work. And that helps us to prove that the hardware itself is working. So it may be the network cable that is causing the fault.